everybody. Well, so far, March has been rather faithful to this wonderful expression that I love. In like a line, out like a lamb. And now, of course, we're all ready for the snow to melt, for the migratory birds to arrive, and for the leaves to come out. In preparation for migratory birds, I would like to mention a few things on backyard feeding. So first of all, if you're thinking about putting up nesting boxes on your property, now is the time to do that. My go-to place for information is Cornell's Nest Watch. There is a segment that is called Right Bird, Right House. So basically, you select the region that you live in and then the habitat that you have on your property and Cornell gives you a list of birds that nest uh, in your area. You can also download plans if you want to build your own nesting boxes. And now, hummingbirds. A few of you have written to me asking when to put up a hummingbird feeder. Well, it all depends on where you live. There have already been sightings of migratory hummingbirds in southern states. There are actually plenty of maps online that track all the sightings, so please check them out and see where they are. And if you're somewhere in the southern areas and you're ready to put up a hummingbird feeder, please remember to put it up somewhere in the shadiest spot and keep an eye on the hummingbird nectar because it does go bad in hot weather. And finally, migration means breeding season and that's when birds sing their hearts out. So if you're looking for an app to help you recognize all the bird songs around you, there is one I can recommend. It's called BirdNet. It was created by Cornell and Chemnitz University in Germany. It was originally available on Android only, but after over a million downloads it's now available on iOS and the reason it's so cool is because it connects to a supercomputer in Germany and that artificial intelligence is really smart my husband and I tried to fool it it didn't work <laughs> John Finley is wondering why a northern cardinal wouldn't feel threatened by a cooper's hawk sitting next to it or why the cooper's hawk is not interested in the northern cardinal sitting next to it. Hi John. Like me, you're lucky enough to have a pair of cooper's hawks nesting in your backyard. You said you were watching a vivid red male cardinal singing its heart out at the top of a tree in bright sunshine, but also in the presence of a young cooper's hawk perched in a nearby tree. The cardinal kept on singing, seemingly taking no notice of the danger nearby. On the other hand, you mentioned that you'd also seen another male cardinal suddenly freeze on the feeder for a minute while a coop flew to a tree nearby. Two things were likely going on, neither of which would have likely been picked up by a human eye. First, a lack of surprise. Cooper's hawks are usually the most successful at hunting if they're able to catch their victim unawares. You can be sure that that singing cardinal was very well aware of the Cooper's hawk perch nearby and likely already had an evasive plan in mind should the hawk have attacked it. The hawk, knowing that, would not bother to waste its energy trying to catch something already aware of it. The same argument could also apply to that cardinal which froze in the feeder. Alternatively, it may well be that either or both of the hawks you saw had fed recently and thus they were not even interested in pursuing the cardinals for a meal. Besides their body language, the fact that it had recently fed would have been evident by a full crop on the hawk. All diurnal birds of prey have a crop in their esophagus which stores food before it proceeds down to the stomach. These full crops sometimes really stand out, even to the practice eye of a seasoned birder. Using feces to determine eating habits of various kinds of mammals is not a novel concept, but with birds it's much more difficult. After all, most bird poop consists of liquid uric acid with a dark dollop of feces somewhere in the mix. In other words, all of the consumed items look the same at that point. But researchers at the University of Otago in New Zealand have come up with a brand new way to analyze feces, that is by identifying the DNA of the prey species. Yellow-eyed penguins are an endangered species in that country, and knowing what they eat is an important piece of knowledge for any conservation programs. Melanie Young, a PhD student, and her colleagues collected over 300 fecal samples from those penguins all along the Otago coast and then extracted a specific gene found in all animals known as mitochondrial 16S to identify individual prey species in their diet. Blue cod was showing to account for a large portion of the penguins menu. This is not good news for the future of the yellow-eyed penguin. 
Several key diet species that were once eaten quite regularly by the penguins in the 80s are apparently no longer available to them. This means that the penguins are quite reliant on the fate of the blue cod instead of having a varied diet. It's well known that any species, bird or otherwise, that hangs its future on just one or two prey species is less likely to be resilient in terms of its long-term survival. In other words, those species with a more specialized diet are less likely to adapt to any changes in their diet. No blue cod, no yellow-eyed penguins. It's that simple. On the plus side though, the novel use of DNA to determine diets in birds holds much promise for the conservation of many species all over the world. I always love hearing stories about innovative ways researchers use to save birds, especially when it doesn't involve poisoning or removing predators. So on this episode, let's travel to New Zealand in South Africa. So in South Africa, pied crows have become a threat to a number of birds in decline. And as we all know, Crows are omnivores, so they often love to treat themselves to bird eggs, and in this case, it's the eggs of the endangered Kitlitz's plover. So researchers decided to build a bunch of artificial nests. They placed lookalike eggs inside, but they filled those eggs with an emetic, a totally harmless but revolting tasting liquid. So when the crows arrived, raided those nests and took the rotten eggs, they had a horrible meal. By the time plovers arrived and nested, crows had already learned that stealing their eggs wasn't really worth the belly ache. In New Zealand, researchers came up with another brilliant idea to help protect the banded dotterel, which is a nationally vulnerable ground nesting plover. Before the birds arrived to nest, researchers created an odorous paste out of uh, bird feathers and carcasses and spread it all over nesting sites. That smell, of course, drew cats and ferrets, but when they arrived to the nesting sites, they found nothing so they quickly lost their interest. So when the banded dotrels arrived to nest, cats, thinking that there was nothing there, simply left them alone. The experiment was conducted over two nesting seasons and it worked beautifully. So researchers are hoping that this ruse will continue to work because this is such a peaceful way to keep predators away. The Center for Biological Diversity in Hawaii is preparing a lawsuit against the U.S. Departments of Fish and Wildlife. The goal of the lawsuit is to push USFW into action to protect the iwi, the Hawaiian honeycreeper, before it goes extinct. The iwi populations are in steep decline because of avian malaria and habitat loss. The center wants the U.S. Fish and Wildlife to designate a protected area where Iwi's favorite nesting trees can be replanted and protected. And the next step is to sterilize mosquito eggs, which cause avian malaria. This disease has killed a lot of Iwi's and many other Hawaiian birds. Wow, 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 144 photo entries on our Duck, Duck, Goose photo contest. Every single judge wrote to me saying how difficult it was to pick the top five. So let's give a round of applause to our judges. Thank you for your time and your hard work. Now let's check out the top five. Here's the third place, the second place, and the grand prize winner. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you for your participation. April is crows, jays, and magpies. All right, it's time to say goodbye. If you participate in our photo contest, please don't forget to ID the birds in your pictures. Take care, everyone. I'll see you in two weeks. <laughs>